the way that the motorcycle media is now shifting um, over to YouTube and online and the information they give. And my big bugbear is my channel. I've only I, I've made it basically because it's a bit of a two fingers up to say to everyone, you don't need to spend 10 grand on a motorbike. Go out there. Like I keep saying mine was only 1600 euros. Okay, set of tires. Um, a few other things, a, a service that I did myself, you know, I, I mustn't have spent more than 2,000 euros. What's that, 1,800 pounds? And I've got a bike that will do everything that this bike in front of you will do that costs 10,500. And it's not just about the price. It's about, are these bikes usable off-road and are they able to do anything more than my bike or you buying a decent second-hand bike that's 20 years old? That's got years of life left in it. And you can still get the same experience. And I believe that these guys are alienating everyone, to be honest. I think they don't do anything good for um, most people that would actually buy a, buy a motorbike and especially a good adventure bike, ride it, commute on it, you know, take tour on it. They could go two up anywhere on it and they can go to these places which, you know, your sports bike, your R1, your R6 aren't going to get to, which is those places less travelled. And they will do that. But do you need to really spend this much money? Why are they telling you this? And are they even testing the bikes to their full capability? So let's find out. Um, the algorithm likes to pick this, guy's up, this guy up. Uh, he's got, uh, it amazes me how people on YouTube have got like 1.82 million subscribers and they, their views, they only get 30,000 people watching their videos. So, you know, the amount of views per subscriber is absolutely abysmal. So maybe this guy's got bots um spot subs but you know it's not unheard of is it they make loads of money out of this and also i'm going to start questioning the paid the uh, paid promotions paid sponsorship so without further ado let's get in. Okay, so absolutely brilliant. They show you the bike. It's a brand new bike, which is lovely. Um, wouldn't it be nice for us all to be able to have $10,500 or 8500 or nine grand spend on a bike, you know, um, especially at this time. And this is at the lower end of the market. I mean, we go to up to the Adventure Gigattis and the Adventure BMWs, and they're like close to 20000 Harley Davidson Adventure, about 20 grand so it's beggar's belief mind-blowing mind-blowing isn't it that this is what you have to aspire to and the information you're getting is constantly this regurgitated motorbikes that are the same things that are all brand new they have all these rider modes and you'll never achieve it or what you're going to ride in in a stop gap get out there and ride guys that's what i'm saying get on a bike and ride buy a little trolley buy a little trolley 400 buy an old 650 single trial bike and you can go anywhere on that commute on it it's bomb proof loads of spares are available for it cheapest chips if you drop it, it doesn't matter if you have your first accident it doesn't matter and this is my argument against people like this it's just a skewered again pissed um perception of motorcycling and that's all there seems to be other or the other way is there's loads of women that like fit fit women that are on motorbikes sports bikes you know with with their i'd say their tits are out but you know i'm not complaining don't get me wrong it's great but once you flip between it there doesn't seem to be any representation of actual proper motorcycling so this is my argument let's speed this up because he is going to go through and as we scroll you'll see the thumbnail at the bottom there all of the riding that he's doing is on straight flat roads in town environment Okay, I'm going to keep scrolling there because I don't want to waste anyone's fucking time. Like I thought it was a complete waste of time watching a review of an adventure bike being driven on the highway and the motorway. Okay, so let's see what he says here. 19 minutes in. Let's give it some. And by give it some, I mean take some away. Oh, that is... <laughs> that. Nobody's going to need more brakes than that. I was a little worried when I, was, I saw that there was like the Jejuan. No one's going to need more brakes than that. He was uh, probably going about 50 mile an hour 
on a full up highway. So you can see how many cars are around him. And then he's trying to say that things are amazing and the brakes are amazing. It, the fucking reviews are pointless. The, the, the garbage that people speak about stuff is just fucking wasted air half the time. So I'm sorry, it sounds like I'm ranting or I'm moaning. I'm not sorry about that because I am, I am ranting. Because I'm, I, I just don't think that the end information is absolutely usable. And I'm, I'm astounded at how fucking many people are watching these videos that are aspiring to get a motorbike that never do it. And I think that's the saddest point. And I think you're sad if you do that. If you don't get off your ass and do it, I think you're fucking sad. So um, anyway, let's play and see Because I'm not goes. super familiar with those. What's interesting is now that we got the Ibex 800 in, I actually noticed that the Zero DSRX that we have in the shop right now also has these... So he's a CF Moto dealer. And this is his own bikes. They've probably given it to him. And obviously he's using it to promote his own bikes. But he does independent reviews. Well, they're not independent then, are they? Of course, he's going to put a Gigatti Desert X next to a CF Moto 800. And the CF Moto 800 will win every time. Because that's his dealership. That's his bread and butter. And again, how fucking stupid do we have to be to not question this if we're going to take this information? So the skewed information is what well, I've got... I've so let's look at my position, why I got off my ass and made this channel. The reason I made this channel is to stop. I was just pissed off, basically, with the information, misinformation and the complete manipulation of what's going on. So I've got two bikes I've got um, in my ownership at the moment. They're mine. OK, I've got no intention, really, of going to get other bikes. Well, I could take a higher bike and do a review on it, which would be, you know, I could do that. That might be quite good. But maybe that's if that's down the road. But that review would be on the bike as its own entity from the riding that it would give, from the style of the bike that it would give, not put next against something that I need to promote. I don't need to promote trans outs because I don't sell them. <laughs> you know, I don't need to promote it just because I've got one. And I will do, I'll give you, I'm bringing you information on things that I like about the bike, things I don't like, because there are drawbacks about the bike and you should know them before you buy them, see if it's right for you. So I'm quite... um I would say for me as an individual, I'm quite a balanced person. Some people say I'm a little bit pessimistic because I'm not more optimistic all the time because I will always give people positives and negatives, not just the positives, because otherwise you're lying really, aren't you? There's always negatives, which is not bad things. We need negativity to have positivity. Without, posi uh, without negativity, you can't make a balanced opinion. But that's the problem today. We're all trying to be so positive. And then we're inside, we're like, well, this is not as good as it's said it was we feel disappointed so um i think we need the reality check but he is paid and his dealership is a cf moto dealer oh, fucking hell guys beggars belief in it jay juan breaks and i'm like are those like chinese brimbos like what is happening they work incredibly well i've got no problems with them and that was that be the conversation you cannot access your settings menu while you're on a phone call. It's very strange. You have to have vertical places. So he's gone nowhere, really. He's gone on the highway. He's gone on straight roads. He hasn't taken it into any twisties. He's not explored the handling of the bike. And this is a first ride. Your first ride to give a view on a bike should be in multiple conditions. He's not riding in the wet. Okay, probably doesn't rain much where he is. So, you know, you can't blame him for that. Uh, goes through all the technical specs. Now, the first ride itself, if you're just going through the specs, just go through the specs. But you need to do a balance review and you need to give balance in everything that you do. So this guy's reviewed his bike that obviously they're sponsored to have. He's probably been giving it for free or he bought it for next to nothing. Um, they are a CF Moto dealer as well, and they've got their own shop. Come on, it's fucking bollocks. Of course he's not going to say anything bad about it. But when you can fill up a video today on these motorbikes because of all the tech that's on them and take up 20 minutes, it's just fucking useless. It's useless to the rider. It's useless, the tech, if you're not going to take it into the environment that it's supposed to be used in. I.e., If it's got a gravel mode, off-road mode... Well, you're not fucking testing it in off-road mode. You're just talking about it. You're spending time talking about it, but you're not showing it. And this is my argument to these fucking losers 
the the have managed to get a massive um subs and uh the representation of it is just piss poor to be honest but let's see get to the end of the video i'll give it my final thoughts and um we'll see if he's actually going to take that on a on even a gravel track or a dirt track on instagram and tiktok on instagram we're at c2dubpix and on tiktok we're at chase on tools i'm gonna film some content and i'll be your why does he need to be on tiktok like okay oh it's fun it's not oh fuck off it's got that you can't do a bike review on tiktok it's fucking horseshit right back Alrighty, guys, that is it for the vertical content. Um, so, a couple things that we gotta do. So, three Ibex 800T. Uh, I have really enjoyed this thing. Shout out to CF Moto for uh, giving me an ADV bike. <laughs> you guys are awesome, uh, and I appreciate. Shout out to CF Moto for giving me an ATV bike, so they gave it to him. Um, it's an ATV bike, all-terrain vehicle. You've been on one terrain, which is tarmac. You haven't even gone into the mountains or the twisties. You're on a highway, driving through straight roads on blocks. It, 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 uh, you can have a fucking dislike for that. Not that it means anything anymore, because you've got not allowed any negativity anywhere. So I'm going to wrap this up and I'm going to tell you, I absolutely think that these, that these, co these reviews are worth nothing. They show you nothing. They take you nowhere. They, all they do is give you the specs of the bike and the price. That's it. They don't do anything that they're, they're not being, these adventure bikes are not being used by even the people that are reviewing them for, um, for the what they were needed to do now i'll bring another video to this where there's a guy um is it tmh um it is tmh uh, and i like the guy actually he's a nice bloke but he, he reviews adventure bikes he's got a, a bmw r1200 gs and he rarely takes that off-road and when he does take it off-road he fucking can't ride it off-road and that is the point for many people is I think a lot of people are going to ride these bikes as well, especially the big ones, the big, heavy trial bikes. To be fair to Chase on Two Wheels, this 800 is not actually that heavy, but I think anything over 200 kilos, I think my Trans Alp, and that's about 200 kilos, just over 200 kilos, I think that's the limit of taking it off-road really. And, I, and, and to do any proper off-roading, I think that you would really struggle in tight little forest. I think you need something 170 kilos or lighter. If you can get 150 kilos, brilliant. You get a little 250, um, a three, 300 single would be very, very good. But these big 300 kilo trial bikes off-road, good luck to you. So I'll bring you another video Um might be tomorrow, next day after, see what the response is like to this one. And we will go through, again, a UK reviewer who with quite, a, he's got 250,000 subscribers. So, you know, he's got a big, big, um, he's got a big throw, big influence. And again, look at, is this guy really using the bike for what it was designed for? He spent all this money on it. Is he get achieving anything? And is the message that's being put out really positive to get people into motorcycling opposed to other than selling big, expensive motorbikes that people really might not have access to? So uh, thanks for getting this far. In, in summary, I think this guy Chase on Wheels is your typical, you know, uh, over, overly positive American that just waffles shit because he's been paid to. And... I think his reviews are, are, are fucking woeful. I don't think that you can take any information from that other than what the bike looks like and the spec of the bike. But he hasn't proven that any ATV ride in there of that bike and used it in any environment that it was designed to be used in. So it's pointless. You know, if they can't show you that and you can't see what it can do off road, you could be spending ten and a half thousand pounds worth or 10 grand or 10,000 euros worth of your money on a bike that's completely fucking useless off-road the first time you take it off-road or to go on a, an adventure with it 
and you realize it's too heavy you can't do anything with it off-road you're you're going to injure yourself you come back scared you just go and sell it what a waste of money and they sold you that fucking dream i'm not saying it's their fault you it's also your responsibility to look a bit deeper isn't it but if it was that misleading to what he's saying is positivity positivity you get spanked okay guys thanks for getting to the end of the video like subscribe um and I will be making more because I believe there is a bit of a misrepresentation on YouTube for information um, for motorcycling. So like, subscribe, uh, comment down below. And if you want to um, disagree, agree, disagree. I don't know. Let's get a healthy conversation going. Many thanks, guys. See you in the next one. Bye bye.